Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, this is Mr. Murray coming to you with a video on quadrilateral problem solving. All right, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you, or at least explain to you, how do we solve problems using the properties that we've learned about quadrilaterals. Um, in this video, I'm gonna focus on the four of the five, or rather five of the six ones we've looked at in class. So that would be parallelograms, uh, rectangles, rhombuses, squares, and trapezoids, okay? Um, there are also kites, um, and I'm not gonna talk about kites right now. I do encourage you to take a look at the notes that we've done in class on those, um, and because some of the properties are important, the diagonal is bisecting, one pair of, of congruent sides, the other pair non-congruent but bisected, the fact that there's four right triangles, etc. That's something we may talk about in class as well, but for this video, I'm only gonna focus on these five shapes. As I noted in the slide, okay, it's extremely, extremely important here. Okay, so I'm gonna just highlight this so that we don't forget about this. Okay, you must have the property sheet, the checkoff sheet, okay? Um, in a moment, you're gonna see a, uh, a link show up on top of the screen to my other video where I talk about the properties. I encourage you to go there and take a look at those properties so that you understand them if you don't, all right? But um, in 2019, 2020, for CP, okay? Let me just make sure that's clear. For CP, we wanna look at 213A. For honors, we wanna look at 2-6, okay? So please make sure that you've gotten, you have your sheet, you have it available, and that you check out that other video if for whatever reason it's not filled in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get started and our first problem is this. If I have a parallelogram, ABCD, with diagonals AC and BD, okay, and the measurement of A is 60, what is the measurement of C? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the first thing we're gonna do in this kind of problem is if we don't have a parallelogram drawn already, right, you wanna visualize it by drawing the parallelogram, okay? And because I'm on a little pad here, mine's gonna be a rough sketch, okay? It's not perfect, but I'm gonna make a rough sketch. Now, when you're labeling, it's extremely important to start at a point and go clockwise around. So that actually shouldn't be C. This here is gonna be D. So we have A, B, C, D, okay? And then you wanna draw in the diagonal. So this is BD. and AC, okay? And so if the measurement of angle A, the whole angle is 60 degrees, if we take a look at our property sheet, what do we know about the opposite angles of a parallelogram? Well, we know that they're, that they're congruent. So that means that angle C also has to be 60 degrees. Let's take a look at some of the other properties that are true. So we know that angle D and angle B have to be congruent. We know that angle D has to be equal to what? It's gonna be 120 degrees because these are called, remember, supplementary, okay? Supplementary adds up to 180 degrees. So this is 120. This is also 120. So notice that figures aren't drawn to scale here. These look obtuse but they're actually acute, and these are actually the obtuse ones. So remember, figures are never drawn to scale. Um, these angles here, we don't actually know because we, we know the properties. These are not gonna meet at a 90 degree angle unless they're a rhombus or a square, and we don't know that that's the case. So again, you want to look at your chart to figure this out, but the answer we're looking for is 60 degrees, okay? So again, really take a second, make sure you understood that, Again, make sure at this point you have that chart out, all right? And then in a second, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. All right, here we go. I've got another parallelogram, and I need to find A, B, C, and D. So let's take a look here. Here's my four angles. It's already drawn. So what do we know about this parallelogram here? Well, one thing we know is let's start by taking a look at A. So when I have a straight line, I need to know, like this, 
what's the total of these angles? The total of these angles is 180 degrees. A flat line is always 180 degrees. These are what's called a linear pair because they add up to 180 degrees. And they're, they're right on a flat line. So these are called a linear pair, okay? Because this is one, this is the other, okay? So that means that if I subtract 130, from both sides, A has to be equal, let me just make that clear, A has to be equal to 50 degrees. Okay, so the measurement of A, grab the right tool here, 50 degrees. Whenever you get a quantity, I would really recommend if you're not done with the problem that you come in and you actually take a moment and write in all of the angles when you get them. And if it's the sides, the sides as well. All right, wonderful. So now these angles, what do I know about this angle and this angle? They are uh, what we would call adjacent or consecutive. And so adjacent angles have to add up to what? They need to add to 180. So A plus B plus 26 is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, and I put these in parentheses because this whole angle is B plus 26, right? The whole in this case is always the sum of its parts. So the whole is the sum of its parts. Okay, so now let's do a substitution here. A, 50 degrees. B, we don't know and the remainder is 26. So see how I can solve this more easily now that I'm down to one variable. So we'll combine like terms, 76 plus B is 180. We'll subtract 106, uh, 76 and we get B is 104. All right, 104 plus 126, or rather 104 plus 26 is 130, plus 50 is 80. That's how I check my work. All right, now that I know that B is 104, there's a few ways that I could find C and D. But let me erase this so we can see this more clearly. Recall, this is a middle school concept. Recall that due to the fact that these are parallel lines, this is a line that cuts through parallel lines, also known as a transversal. Okay, and so as a result, angle B and angle D are congruent. Okay, so how we'd write this is angle B is congruent to angle D. This means congruent because they're alternate interior angles. Okay, so that means their measurements are the same, and so therefore, measurement of angle D is equal to the measurement of angle B. So therefore D is equal to 104. Okay, last but not least, we need to find angle C. Okay, and now that I've got, I can move down, maybe I can uh, try that again. Maybe I can box that out. Beautiful. Now, what we know is this. 26 C and D are part of a triangle. And so what do the angles of a triangle have to add up to? 180 degrees. So I have 26 plus C plus D equals 180 degrees. That's a fact about triangles, okay? Now I know D is 104. And I need to add C. And now I add these two. Now I subtract the 130 and I get 50 degrees. And this kind of makes sense because look, notice we are in a parallelogram. And so in a parallelogram, opposite sides or opposite angles rather, if you look at your parallelogram property sheet, have to be congruent. So A is congruent to C and if A is 50, C therefore must also be 50. 
So these are my values. I have A is 50, B 104, D 104, C 50. Okay. So I hope this made sense to you. I hope you're able to work that out. Okay. If this was tough for you, I encourage you to go back and take a look. Otherwise, in just a second, I am going to go ahead and move on to the next problem. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move on and I need to find X and Y if a, B, C, D is a rectangle. Technically, the way we labeled this is not entirely accurate. C and D ought to flop. So just for technicality, I'll flip that. And I need to find X and Y. So let's take a look at what I have here. Well, remember, let's take a look at your parallelogram, pro or your rather, yeah, we can look at that. So take a second and think about this one. Where are X's and Y's? Are they parts of angles or are they parts of sides? They're parts of angles. What do we know about the angles of a, of a rectangle? They are all 90 degrees. Okay. Important. All right. Now, what do we also know about rectangles? Well, they're cut into two congruent triangles, okay? Such that each triangle has a sum of how many degrees? 180, okay? So I can't solve these right away because yes, these are in theory congruent to each other. So we do know that um, to be clear, let me just back that change out. We know that angle A, C, D, is congruent, this means congruent, remember, to angle C, A, B. These are alternate interior. Okay? No, not Siri. Haha. <laughs> All right. Congruent. Now, here's the problem these contain two letters. So I'm not going to get a unique solution if they both contain different letters because I'd have to solve for X and Y. That's a problem. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I know that this is 4Y plus 1. And if I add 3Y minus 2, what are these three? And I add on my 90 from the corner. What do these three have to add up to? They need to add to 180 because it's a triangle. So let's combine like terms here. Well, first I've got the Y, so I've got 7Y. I've got 1 minus 2 and 90. So it's a total of 89 and you would do this on a calculator because on a test or a quiz um, you'd have access to a calculator I don't see why you wouldn't um, it, it just wouldn't make I don't think in this case I would do that whether you're honors or a CP okay now I'm gonna subtract 89 on both sides I'm gonna knock off that 89 because at this point we're just solving for y so I get 7y equals 91 divide by 7 divide by 7 Again, this would be done in your calculator. And y is equal to 13. All right. And now that I know that, I can actually obtain a value. And I have two ways of solving it. I know these are congruent, but I also know that these add up to 90. So I'll show you both ways of doing it. Okay. So now we need to find x. So 4y minus 1 plus x plus 2, right, because this is x plus 2, equals 90, because all the angles of a uh, rectangle are congruent. Alternatively, we know that x plus 2 equals 3y minus 2, because these are alternate interior. Now, y is equal to 13. We know that. So if I plug in 13 for y, 
Th this becomes 4 times 13, which is 52. I just kind of flip those terms around. So let me just, uh, let's just stay consistent here. Okay, now I'll combine like terms. So 54, 52 minus one is 51, plus two is 53. Nine minus the 53. And I should get X equals 37. Let me do that on my calculator real fast. And I get 37. So that's one way to do it. And that would solve the problem. Otherwise, look, I know Y is 13, right? So this is X plus two. 3 times 13 is 39. Okay, so x plus 2. Uh, wait a minute, let me just double check this. Because here I'm getting something different. Wait a minute. Or y was 13. Let me, so let's just double check this one more time. So we have 13 times 4, 52. Minus 1 is 51. 53 plus x. Am I missing something, folks? Ah, here I go. It's supposed to be a plus one. All right, let's fix that real quick. My mistake. All right, let's fix that real quick. All right, so let's say we got this. All right, how would that make a difference? So 52 plus one is 53, 55, and I'd be minusing 55. So X would be 35. Okay, so this is a little bit harder and a little bit more prone to error. On the other hand, X plus two over here would be 37. Okay, and minus two minus two, 35. Okay, so what I'm getting at is there's two ways to solve it. You could use the fact that this, these lines, oh, that was sloppy of me. These lines are parallel. Okay, by the properties of rectangles, because all rectangles are parallelograms, these lines are, are parallel and they're being cut through by a transversal. Again, I'm kind of a little bit being picky with myself here. Okay, parallel lines cut by transversal. Right, this is my transversal. So these are alternate interior, they're equal, or the fact that it's a rectangle. So uh, the, all four angles must be 90, so these have to add up to 90, okay? So again, I really encourage you to go back and take a look. Remember our final answer, X is 13, Y is 35, okay? Please go ahead and make sure you understand how I got that, and then in a moment I am gonna go ahead and move on. All right, and by the way, that wasn't the only way to solve it. We could have figured out this angle, because if this is 37, um, we know that 90 minus 37 is 53, making that equal to 50. And then we, what we could have done, there's all different kinds of ways to solve for X because this is 53 plus X plus two plus 90 is 180. All different kinds of ways to solve the problem. And remember, as long as you solve it in a way that's mathematically correct, you're going to get full credit. I'm not looking to shoehorn you into one way of doing it. I'm just looking for you to get a correct answer that makes sense. Okay. Now I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna ask us to find X if PQRS is an isosceles trapezoid, okay? And again, for consistency, we should have S over here and we should have R over here. So remember, in an isosceles trapezoid, just as with an isosceles triangle, remember when we talked about isosceles triangles, the base angles opposite the congruent sides are congruent. So therefore, 3X minus two is congruent to 10x plus 19. Remember, these are also congruent. Remember, I was caught lacking by, for, by neglecting to fully tell you that those are also congruent, okay? But we're only focusing on these right now, okay? So basically, let's solve this. So I'm gonna, I would recommend you minus the 3x because if, if you do that, it's easier to minus three than to minus 10, okay? In this case, because this will stay a positive number. All right, now, this answer might not fully make sense in context. You know, you don't always get a whole number. 
or a number that will actually work out. These are actually going to be negative angles. I'm just kind of going for a can you show me their equal perspective. Okay, now I'm going to minus 19. This becomes negative 21. Then I divide by 7. Okay, and again, when you plug it in, this is going to be nonsense. You're going to get negative 11 and negative 11. That's all right. I'm just looking for you to show that in an isosceles tri uh, trapezoid, the legs are congruent and that both angles on the top and the bottom are respectively congruent to each other. Remember, the tops don't have to be congruent to the bottoms, but they do. The tops have to be congruent to each other and the bottoms to each other as well. Okay, so this is a more straightforward one, but I do encourage you to make sure you understood this. Please go ahead and again, if, if rewind if necessary, and then in a moment I will move on. All right, here I go. I'm gonna move on to this problem right here. Suppose the shape is a parallelogram. Which of the following must be true? Only one is true if it is also a rhombus. Okay, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you, first let me read it, and this will be one for you to try. So the first statement says that WZ is congruent to XY. The second statement is that X, W, Y is congruent to X, Z, Y. The third statement is that WX is congruent to XZ which is congruent to uh, YZ, this should say YZ, which is congruent to WY. So let me just go in and make sure we're clear on this one. So what this should say is, let me just go in with, oh, let me just go in with my, um, so that should be YZ, okay, it's congruent to WY. So again, essentially, this is congruent to this, is congruent to this, is congruent to that. Finally, WY is parallel to XZ. So I'm asking which of these four statements must be true if this shape is a rhombus, okay? So what I want you to do, go ahead, pause the video, take a look at your property sheet, and then in a moment, figure it out, unpause, and I'll show you how to solve it. Alrighty, so let's take a look. The first statement says that WZ is congruent to XY. In other words, it's implying that a diagonal is congruent to another diagonal. This is not true of a rhombus. It's only true of two shapes. What are they? That would be a square or a rectangle. So this is not true. Next, X w y is congruent to x z y that is true of a rhombus but it is also true of a parallelogram so showing that these are opposites and congruent alone does not set it apart from any other shape a rectangle that'll work a square that'll work a rhombus that'll work a parallelogram it'll work so this is also not true, though it is true of a rhombus, it's not unique to a rhombus, okay? The same thing goes for WY and XZ. It's saying the opposite sides are parallel, and that's not unique either, because that's true of a rhombus, a parallelogram, uh, even a trapezoid, you could even make it such that if, if these are the basis of a trapezoid, that could be true, right? A trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides, and a square, so not unique to a rhombus. This is unique to a rhombus, okay? Now, you're gonna say, Mr. Moray, that's also true of a square. However, we know that everything is true of a square. If I take one property and put it on, that's true of a square too. What I'm getting at is, if it's a parallelogram, which of these properties is gonna set it apart? And what's unique about a rhombus is that the four sides are congruent. Just as with a rectangle, the fact that the four angles are each 90 degrees, that would set it apart from a rhombus. Remember, if you take a look at the property sheet, which was, again, either in 2019, 2020, that was 26 for honors and 213A for CP, okay? If you take a look at that sheet, what you're going to notice is, remember, when you look at the rectangle and the rhombus, 
anywhere that a, a rectangle, the property is true, it's false for a rhombus. So for example, a rhombus has congruent diagonals, or, or rather a rectangle has congruent diagonals, a rhombus does not. A rectangle has congruent angles, a rhombus does not. A rhombus has four congruent sides, a rectangle does not. So it's really important you go back and look at those because they are important. Remember, this also has perpendicular um, diagonals, so these are perpendicular, and remember, the diagonals also bisect the angles. We know that the angles are being bisected. And these little dots indicate that these individual pieces are congruent to each other. Okay. So I hope this made sense to you. Go ahead, if needed, rewind and check this through again. And then in a moment, I'll move on to our final problem. Okay, so this last one, suppose S, T, A, R, is a trapezoid. We don't know what kind it is, but we do know it's a trapezoid. Suppose that ST is congru is parallel to RA. I technically have to make that um, declaration because we know that one pair of sides in a trapezoid is parallel, so I do need to declare technically the parallel sides. And UV is a median, or remember, median in this case, in this use, not in statistics, in this use, is the same thing as saying the word mid-segment. We usually talk about those in triangles, but remember we kind of w uh, switched around the order this year. Suppose ST is 3X, RA is 7X plus 10, and UV is 30. What is X? So this is going to be another you try. Again, if this is tough for you, if you don't know at this point, before you let me solve it, go take a look at your trapezoid notes, okay? I don't recall, I bet it would be 27 for honors maybe and 214 for CP, but please go and take a look at your trapezoid notes. You don't even need to have them filled in. They're on the Binder website. The information you need to know is there, I believe. Take a look, try to solve this on your own, pause it, and then when you're ready, unpause and I'll show you how to solve. All right, so let's try to solve this. Remember, the first thing we always, always, always do is write in any information we know. 3x, 7x plus 10, and 30. So what you need to know about a median is that the length of the median is equal to the base 1 plus base 2 over 2. It's literally the median of the bases. Okay, so in this case, it's st plus RA, it doesn't really matter the order because you're adding, divided by two, okay? So if we think about it, what's the median? It's 30. What's ST? Well, ST is 3X, RA is 7X plus 10. And let's see if we can solve this. So we have 30 equals 10X plus 10 over 2. Okay, if I divide this by 2, remember one of the biggest mistakes people make is they only do one thing. If you're going to simplify this, I divide this by 2, I divide this by 2. Okay, believe it or not, can I do I have to divide both is a mistake I was making up until college. Don't let that be you. You need to understand it's like you're distributing the division of 2 into both things. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 5 on both ends. I'm going to get 25 equals 5x. Divide both sides by 5. I get x equals 5. Okay, other way I could have done this. Well, if I add these up and divide by 2, what I need to get is 30. So what number, when I divide it by 2, will give me that 30? The answer, right, is going to be 60. So the other way to solve this problem, this is called, so let's call this method one. This is method two. So I know that when I take 3x and I add, what I have to get is 60. So that when I cut it in half, I get the median length of 30. So we combine like terms. We subtract 10. 
and we divide by 10. Okay, you see we get the same answer. And remember, I'm never looking to harp on you for a particular method. What I want to see is a method that one, is mathematically correct, two, that gets the correct answer, and three, is comfortable for you. Okay, so folks, that's all I have for my parallelogram practice videos. Um, I hope that you found these videos to be helpful. I hope that you were able to get a lot out of this. Um, there's a lot to this stuff, but remember, I, I, I can't dig at you enough about this. Please, 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 please make sure you have the parallelogram property sheet. Make sure you understand the properties and the nuances, right? The difference between the different kinds of shapes, okay? Because that is the key to being able to solve these problems. Okay, and it's an important idea in math to understand the different properties and to use them, okay? One of my strictest but best professors in college said, always go back to the definitions. The heart of any kind of proof, any kind of logic making is in the definitions, all right? So keep it up. Don't give up on yourself. I'm not giving up on you. And remember, you can do it. All right, thanks for watching. Stay persistent, stay working at it, and have a wonderful day.